touch the Lord as He passes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your cry. Hi, this is Reach Out with the Lynns, and I'm Kelly Lynn. I'm Jerry Lynn. And we are co-pastors at Reach Out Fellowship in Colony, New York. Welcome to our program, Bible Teaching for Today. Today we're going to talk about the new birth. The new birth, the spiritual birth through Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, we're going to be looking at John chapter 3. And if you have a chance to get your Bible, you might want to turn with us to John chapter 3. We'll give you a moment to find it and find that location. And uh, while you're doing that, Kelly and I are uh, at Reach Out Fellowship. We're at 218 Osborne Road in Colony. We have Sunday morning services at 1030 and Thursday evening services at 7. We'd love to see you stop by. That's Reach Out Fellowship, 218 Osborne Road in Colony. Well, now you have your Bible in hand, hopefully, and uh, turn to John chapter 3, and Kelly's going to open us now in prayer, please. Gracious Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to preach the good news, the news of the new birth. Prepare the hearts of those who are going to listen today, Father. Help them, Lord, to call on your name and be saved. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, the new birth. We're going verse by verse through John, and let's pick it up with verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things, these signs that you do, unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not know, receive our witness? If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. As Moses And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe, he has... But he who is, does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the only name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Okay, that's a long uh, passage there. I wanted to read the whole thing in continuity uh, and uh, as a whole, because that's the full speech on the new birth, verses 1 to 21. Uh, there's a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. We tend to think of all the Pharisees as being hypocrites and and evil. They're not. Uh, in fact, Nicodemus is going to be uh, one of the men who is going to bury Jesus, along with Joseph of Arimathea, whose tomb is used by Jesus. So this is a man who's sincerely wanting to know more about God. And verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night. 
Uh, why did he come by night? We don't really know. Probably because he was the ruler of the Jews and he had to hide and come at night. Could well no be. one could see him. Could well be. And uh, unless the Lord was just busy during the day, but probably he was a little, I think he was uh, a little afraid. afraid. Yeah. So he came by night, but the important thing is he came, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, Rabbi or teacher, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how does he know? For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So at that time... He knew something was going on here with this man. Exactly. At that time, they were looking at the signs as an indication that Jesus had the real message from God. And he would heal, cast out demon spirits. We already saw him turn water into wine. He'll still the storm. He'll do a number of wonderful miracles. What about today? Are people expected to believe the gospel just by our telling them that? Or can, do they have the right to see signs to help them believe? I believe they have the right to see signs today. And I believe those signs are available today. If we will just believe, Jesus, as a matter of fact, will tell his disciples when he commissions them, according to the Gospel of Mark, Mm -hmm. that he's going to give them signs to follow their ministries. I want to go, I want to jump from the beginning of Jesus' ministry to the end of it. And now he is appearing to the disciples uh, as they meet on Sunday night after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Kelly's going to read from Mark 16, verse 14. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not, did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So those are the signs that the Lord had promised the disciples. And uh, what happened after he rose from the dead? So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through their accompanying signs. So they did their part. The Lord did his part. They went out and those signs followed them. And that word followed in the Greek is the word they use for a dog following a master everywhere he goes. And uh, we talk about dogging my steps. You're dogging my steps is a reference to the fact that dogs just follow your your master wherever they go. And uh, that's the idea here. As you go out and serve the Lord, expect these signs to follow even today. Uh, You're going to be able to cast out demons, speak with new tongues, take up serpents or anything that's deadly and that will not harm you, and uh, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So Jesus was doing signs in the beginning of his ministry. He did signs throughout his ministry. The disciples did signs. And all through the last 2,000 years, there have been those who have believed in and have practiced the signs. And Kelly and I are among those who firmly believe in that, that all the signs of God are available for today. The ministries of God are available for today, speaking in tongues, casting out demons, um, and healing the sick. We have a strong emphasis here in this church on uh, healing the sick. That's why we became Reach Out Fellowship, to accentuate that, that uh, we are reaching out in the name of Jesus for healings. And we're seeing God bless in a powerful way. So you're doing the signs. We know you're from God. I want to know more about God and how to get saved. That's what Nicodemus is really wanting to know. So what did Jesus say in verse 3? There was a man of the Pharisees, and Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Whoa, 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 unless unless one is born again. That hit, must hit him like a ton of bricks. What does that mean? As a Pharisee, he was schooled in the law. He knew how to keep the law to the best of his ability and how to make uh, repentance and, and confession and animal sacrifices if the law was broken. Uh, he knew all about that, but he did not know about being born again mm. or born from above. Uh, he knew about being dutiful and following the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. He did not know about a spiritual birth from above. But he says here, you can't see the kingdom of God apart from being born again. Mm -hmm. So now Nicodemus asks a very 
uh, important question, a very, very basic question, verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeah, so the natural thing in question is a second time? No, he's not referring to that. He's referring to something very different, verse 5. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water in the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound, but cannot tell where it comes from. And where it goes, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So, verse 5, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean, water and the Spirit? Well, capital S on Spirit gives us an indication that we're talking about the Holy Spirit. You cannot be born again apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will tell us in the Gospel of John, the work of the Holy Spirit is to what? Convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment. And the Holy Spirit is to teach us all things. So the Holy Spirit is going to be necessary for our salvation. What does it mean to be born of the water? Well, there have been a number of interpretations on that, and it's interesting reading. We could spend the rest of the program talking about that. But the the explanation that I like the best is water baptism. Not that water baptism saves you, But water baptism evidences your salvation. You give your life to Christ, and then you are water baptized. That's the beginning of life in the Spirit. You come to Christ by grace. You're saved by grace. And then you go through baptism by immersion to witness to others that you gave your life to Christ. That's the beginning of your being born again. You come by faith. By God's and grace. And then there's a water baptism. And then they're, they're baptized in water to confirm that. That is the beginning of your ministry. And the Holy Spirit has to be the one who's there to bring you to Christ, to convict you. So this is now the new birth. The old birth, verse 6, was the born of the flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's a carnal life. It's a fleshly human life. It doesn't mean sinful, but it means in the body. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So we're going to close it there. Uh, Kelly's going to just lead us in prayer, and we'll have a few closing remarks. Yes, Father, we thank you so much for your word. We ask, Lord, that those who are hearing this message would um, give their life to Christ today that they would put their faith and hope faith and hope in in the Lord they would repent of their sins turn from their sins and be truly born again um and just by faith walk and things will change in their lives help them to see this Lord help them to put their faith in you and repent of their sins we ask these things in your name amen we invite you to join us for one of our church services at Reach Out Fellowship on Sunday morning at 10.30 and Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Our prayer and healing services are on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Our church is located at 218 Osborne Road in Colony, New York. If you'd like to call us for prayer or anything else, our phone number is 518-482-4565. 518-482-4565. Our website address is reachoutfellowship.com. And if you go to our website at reachoutfellowship.com, you'll see information about our church. And you'll also have a very extensive library of verse-by-verse teaching throughout the whole Bible. Every verse of the Bible has been taught through our teachings, and uh, you'll find it a great resource. There are colleges and seminaries that are using these videos and audios for their students to get different degrees, master's, doctorate, what have you. Don't forget to give if you possibly can. Go to giving on that site. We'd appreciate it. We need your support to stay on the air. That's reachoutfellowship.com. And again, visit us on Sunday morning at 1030 if you can. God bless and shalom.